Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I teach at the University of Ottawa and also at Carleton University. I teach courses like meteorology, oceanography, climatology, and um, environmental issues courses in the geography departments. July 20th of this year, 2017, was an extremely amazing day. Um, why? Essentially, the jet streams crossed the equator around the entire circumference of the Earth. Okay, it's really hard to believe, but let me just show you. So if you Google Earth Null School, okay, N-U-L-L -L School, Earth Null School, you get this and click on Earth in the bottom, click on Earth in the bottom left corner and bring up the menu, look at height, 250 millibar, you're looking at winds, click on, and, and then you can cycle back here with the double arrow back a day for each time you click it and go to July 20th, 2017, and it's 20 hundred local time. Okay, so I'll expand and uh, look at the flow here. Okay, this is flow from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere. This is the equator here. So what you can do is if you click here, it tells you the coordinates. So it's about almost seven degrees east. And you can follow through and look all the way across and you can see wind flow crossing the equator. And it's being pulled essentially by the very wide and strong jet streams in the southern hemisphere. So you can see it being pulled across and let's move around the earth here. Okay, it's still being pulled here. Strong flow. Flow is a bit weaker here, but it's still clearly here. It's going from the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere. There's all these gyres that are spinning off from the southern hemisphere jet streams. So it's being dragged by the southern hemisphere jet streams uh, um, across the equator. There's, there's not too much flow here. There's a little bit south, a little bit north. You know, we can keep going around the Earth here. And here the flow is like this. Okay, there's not much flow here. It's coming down here, you know, in this kind of loop. Lots of flow over here. Let's keep going around the Earth. Okay, let it update. Here there's strong flow. You can see it's kind of weak flow, but it's coming this way. Here it's coming south. You know, here it's stronger flow again. And we go back to our starting point right here. Okay, so here it's coming up this way. Okay, so basically going around the entire planet at the equator, we're getting flow, airflow at 250 millibar, the height of the jet streams, across the equator. This is causing tremendous mixing, right? Right now we're in the in summer in the northern hemisphere. Okay, it's winter in the southern hemisphere. There's incredible amounts of mixing. I haven't seen this before. Okay, unprecedented, question mark. You know, we, I need to look in, 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 in more detail through all of the dates and all of the cases, all of the data. But this is uh, very unusual. And what is really unusual here is that over this inc incredible distance here, you know, this is basically, well, here is six about seven degrees east or so and if we go to the other side here you know um 173 degrees west right so you know add six that's about 180 degrees halfway around the earth it's continuous and it's fairly strong and then you know as i showed you it continues so what's going on well let's remind you about the jet stream so if you just go to Google Images and put in jet streams, you can get all of these different images. So here is a typical situation, a subtropical jet here, a polar jet here in both hemispheres. Um, they keep to their own hemispheres. They don't cross the equator in general. This is a cross section of the jet stream. This is the equator here. Air rises, hot air rises, the equator spreads out into a Hadley cell, a feral cell and a polar cell, the tropopause, is about 17 kilometers at the equator, about seven kilometers at the, at the North Pole, 
And where these cells gear and mesh, you have the, the jet streams, the subtropical jet and the polar jet. But what's happening is the Arctic is warming so fast, this is coming up, this is not going up as much, decreases the temperature gradient, the jet streams become slower and wavier, but they also spread out more. And I'll talk about how they spread out. They're not as focused or as concentrated. So there's all these different images. Here's a jet stream again. You know, normally it's focused in this band, which crosses, which go, which circumvents the Earth coming from um, west to east because of the rotation of the Earth. Uh, here are some of the speeds, very strong in the center, tapering off as you go further out. Okay, so there's lots of images here of the jet stream and explanation. The key thing is that the jet stream separates cold air from warm air. So here's a case where the jet stream is mostly zonal, going from west to east around circumventing the planet. Um, then you can get these waves developing, especially when the Arctic is warming. It's not as cold here. You get these undulations or waves called Rosby waves. Okay, that begin to form. The jet stream has a more north-south component. And this is where the waves are strongly developed. So you have a trough here and a, and a ridge here and a trough here. Okay, um, this type of pattern, this pattern gets kind of stuck into place. It's persistent. And then you can get these waves being pinched off. Okay, so the lows get pinched off and then the jet stream takes on more of the original configuration with some pinched off lows. If you look straight down on the North Pole, okay, this is a typical situation of the, of the jet stream where there's not much um, north-south um, component. And then this is what's happening as the north-south component, as the jet stream is getting wavier in the north-south direction. You have these low pressure areas and high pressure areas. High pressure areas, hot and dry. Low pressure areas, cold and colder and stormier. Okay, the, the jet stream is like a wall, separating the cold air and the hot air. This is when it gets pinched off, the lows start getting to pinched off, you get cold outbreaks. Uh, got messed up there. Okay, cold outbreaks here, and then the pinched off lows here, and then this is more like you get back to this situation here where you now have pinched off lows. Okay, um, so what happens, okay, so this is a temperature plot showing how, you know, we've got the cold air masses here, hot warm air masses in the middle here, and you've got the jet stream here is where the colors are changing, where the temperatures are changing. Okay, so it's separating the cold air from the warmer air from even the warmer air. Okay, this is another view, sort of, this is the, the Hadley cell and the feral cell and the polar cell. And what happens is it sets up surface, cur surface winds. Okay, in the Northern Hemisphere, things deflect to the right. This is a low pressure area because the air has risen. You get cloud formation, the intertropical con convergence zone, and then you get the um, trade winds and th these are the horse latitudes, westerlies. These get focused and form the jet streams. Okay, so this is a cross section this is air is rising here you get the hadley you get the feral and you get the polar i've just expanded the view from what i showed you on the original on the first uh, image just by go, go to google images put in jet stream and have a look at this to see which way the flows are and to see how the jet streams are formed okay um this is uh okay this is just a paper or a, an article that has those images in there. Um, here we are back here. Okay, so about a year ago, okay, you'll see my image on, if you Google, go to Google Images, put in Jetstream, scroll down, you'll see my image there. You know, why is it there? Okay, from about a year ago. Because I put out a video called Jet Streams, Unprecedented Jet Streams Crossing the Equator. I said this was a fairly new phenomena and, and, uh, and was a problem. It represented a new 
problem because the jet streams are weakening, they're moving further south, they're not as strong, they get wavier, they're actually crossing and combining um, and being reinforced with southern hemisphere jet streams. Okay, so this is a video, if you just Google paulbeckwith.net, my website, um, this is the, the opening page right here is the video that went viral about a year ago, unprecedented jet stream crosses the equator. Click on here, please, to help me out. Um, I do these videos on my own time and my own effort, and uh, you know I re just rely on donations uh, to keep them going. Um, okay, so that's what happened a year ago, and there were lots of articles. For example, this is an image that I showed where the jet stream is actually crossing the equator from the northern hemisphere, joining the, that on the southern hemisphere. Now. Again, um, go so go to Earth, go to Google, Google Earth Null School. Click on Earth, a global map. Okay, rendering globe. Click on Earth, and you can select the 250 millibar pressure, its wind, and so on. If you click this again, it shuts off. And it will down uh, the computer's slow right now, but it will download the map, and then you can move this around and do whatever you want, expand it in and out, and you can see the the data. Okay. So this is what I showed you on the additional um, map, uh, plot here. Okay. So again, this this is July twentieth. Okay. So the jet stream is air is being pulled across the equator around the entire planet. So why does this set up? Okay, so let's have a look. Um, this is July 26 now. So let's have a look at what happens. So you can see the jet stream here is, the, the southern hemisphere jet stream is very, very wide, very, very powerful, very, very wide. And it's pulling air along and it's pulling air across the equator. And we're getting this sort of looping thing set up. So let's advance a day and see how this develops. Okay, hopefully it will cooperate with me. Okay, my computer seems to have frozen here. Let's get rid of this. Okay, now it's going to update. Okay, so here we go. This is July 27th. You see this circular looping pattern here. Okay, this is interesting because if this was in the northern hemisphere, this would be a cyclone, this would be a low pressure area. It would draw in air from around, deflects to the right in a cyclone. If this was in the southern hemisphere, it would be an anti-cyclone. It would be a high pressure area air coming out deflects to the left in the southern hemisphere and this would be the the flow over an anticyclone here we're at the equator the coriolis force is zero at the equator things wouldn't normally be rotating at the equator unless they're caught the rotation is not generated at the equator it is it is caused at the equator by air being pulled from the southern hemisphere jet streams that are extremely wide there's no focus here Okay, this is very unusual behavior because it's so wide. It's not focused, but it's very strong winds across. It's dragging air, creating this, uh, this spinning action. Let's go through another day. Okay, so here we go. You see it's moving slightly and developing. I mean, the jet stream in the southern hemisphere is filling the entire space, essentially. Okay, here's, here's through, advancing through another day. And another day, and you can see what's happening. Okay, the air is being pulled. So the southern hemisphere jet streams are influencing, they're basically sucking air out of the northern hemisphere in these configurations. This is not just not monsoonal flow. This is not, this is very strange behavior that is happening because our jet streams are wavy and fractured and broken because the temperature balance on the earth has changed from abrupt climate change, the Arctic warming. So here we go, we get another loop, you know, we can keep going, advancing a day at a time. If you want to advance three hours at a time, you can hit that, but a day at a time. And you can see, you know, clearly we're getting these vortices appearing right at the equator. We're getting the jet stream crossing, and this is very unusual behavior. Thank you.